Well, uh, I'm back to the old format of what my first like YouTube videos on now, like these days, of course. Doing, let's just say, April and May. Yes, April and May of 2020, I did videos like this. Where I only had to do one video, of course, and not separate clips, like I did in the one hour and five minute video that was uploaded and created on the 3rd of June. Well, I actually made that video on the 2nd of June, and actually all the clips were filmed on that day, of course. And the weather outside has been completely different, and it's not looking like summer by the sense in the way it looks like now. It feels a little bit like autumn or spring, or maybe winter, but, yep, that's typical British summer. Often seems changeable. And uh, in this video, also, apart from the British weather has now gone from hot to cold, <laughs> if that makes any sense, it's more like cool rather than cold. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at, well, let's just say 15 take away 10 flip out products. That equals 5. So there's 4 flip out origami second boot toys, and they're more like water birds. But I'm also looking at another, you know, another toy that is basically, well, it looks like the, um, I'll show it to you first. It's this one here. It's like a um, spider monkey, but it's a, um, a female one, of course. It's got a very anime cartoony looking eye, and she looks interesting because she's got pink eyelashes. And not only that, she's also got a pink eyelid as well. And her eye sockets are, of course, brown. That's very weird, but that's what nature tends to be. And she's also got pretty long legs. And she's also, I'm pretty sure they look like claws, but I think they're more like... I don't know, I think they look more like hands. I'm pretty sure they're hands because of the way that they are, uh, you know, obviously designed like that in real spider monkeys. I think I've seen these in um, Dudley Zoo and um, the Nature Center, and I'm pretty sure that the same spider monkeys from Dudley Zoo are the ones from the Nature Center because if I remember, last year there was a fire at the um, Wildlife Park in Birmingham, which is the one next to Cannon Hill Park, I believe that's the one next to Cannon Hill Park, and the exhibit was engulfed, it was not really engulfed in flames completely, but uh, maybe it was, I can't remember, but it was searing hot, and I don't know what caused the fire from that exhibit day, but anyways, that monkey has got uh, back legs, which are like that, of course, pretty small looking compared to those freakish looking arms, which look pretty long, and uh, it's also got a tail which is prehensile. Yeah, prehensile tail means it's basically a tail that you can, you know, you can tell it's a prehensile tail because it can grapple into things. And I think it's a great looking thing for a monkey that, that I'm pretty sure. If I give you the demonstration like that, it hangs somewhere like that though, eh? You know, it could be a great ornament, you know, to probably hang it towards your, your window handle or your door handle or anything handles, etc. That's a great piece of decoration, isn't it, though? Maybe you can use it as, like, a an Amazon rainforest or jungle scene, a random jungle scene. But anyways, that monkey, I'm pretty sure, uh, looks very... It's not always that black, but I think I can see splotches of white, and possibly grey, but it looks quite amazing. I think it's supposed to be a, um, a Colombian black spider monkey. I think that's the monkey that I saw at the Nature Center, and also the same monkey at Dudley Zoo, and these were, like, you know... The, you know, I'm pretty sure these are like the same monkeys that I saw at the um, nature centre. Uh, the, the, the ones that were caught on the fire, they're now sent to the, the zoo. They're now in um, Dudley, of course. Anyways, that's that monkey done. Without any monkey business at all. Hey! Hey! Don't play any monkey business going on here on the rail, so you've got that prehensile tail right behind you. But yes, in this video I'm going to take a look at some water birds, some flip up origami Flabbing birds, which are supposed to be based on water birds from South America, of course, specifically Brazil. I don't know why I'm not really talking that properly, of course, but maybe there's something stinging my mouth, probably an ulcer or a canker sore in my mouth, I don't know. Uh, but anyways, we've got our first product here. It's the Snow Egret Fishing Flock 12 Pack, and it looks quite interesting, £13.50, and it looks so, so cool. And if I take them on the back of the packaging, which looks like that, pretty cool, isn't it, right? You can see it looks like a very, 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 well, let's just say cranky looking 
snow egret almost looking like a little egret from the old world and uh, um, oh wow there's a fact here let me just have a closer look at it here it says snow egrets are one of the American New World cousins I'm pretty sure if you can see that now um, one of the New World cousins more so I'm pretty sure they're like oh I don't know what I'm saying here but uh, more so the averagely heavier ones of the old world little egrets so they're basically like little egrets from the new world although I do hear that there are some little egrets that have actually colonized the Americas let's just say the Caribbean and you know I often do see little egrets in the UK and also during holiday trips to Malaysia but I'm pretty sure um, they might have colonized the Americas I'm pretty sure they have Check out what we have inside. Oh, they look pretty. Oh, wow, they look pretty much bigger than you would obviously expect from a little egret from our country and also Southeast Asia and also around other parts of the old world. Oh, wait, hang on. Let me just show you closely. Uh, let me just show you right there. There you go. Uh, let me just show you what the fish look like. Oh, great. Oh, did, oh my god, I think I've just got my face on my camera. Normally I don't do that on my videos on my YouTube channel, of course. Okay, so here's the fish. How they look like. I'm just taking a bit of time here just to make the video a lot more interesting, but also a lot more proper sort of video. And it's got a very nice looking face. Yes, it looks pretty um, contented, that fish. Uh, they are based in the Cardinal Tetra, which I think is supposed to be a very popular pet fish, and I think they come from the Amazon River, and I think they are freshwater fish. Yeah, it looks quite good. You know, I'm pretty sure these fishies have actually got the same colours as the... I don't know, it looks like the same flag colours as the US. Now, uh, it looks quite interesting though, these fish. And there's three more, actually two more and three more. It uh, looks quite nice. I'm just taking my time here because I've got a pain in my mouth though. Yeah, I think whenever I have a pain in my mouth though, I just can't even talk. Probably I need a bit of bonjello or something, I don't know. There's the other fish there. Okay, looks very, very nice. And also there's the other one here. Looking all interesting, I'd say. Yeah, that's the same. Same, same. Okay, let's move on to the snowy egrets. I'm only going to take a look at one of these because um, I'm pretty sure all of these birds here are going to be very, very similar. And remember, I've only got three more fit up products to go. And it looks quite nice. Once again, we've got the face here. And it's actually got a little yellow um, head plumage there. It looks pretty interesting. I think this is the non breeding plumage of what a um, a snow egret would look like though and yes they are much more heavier than little egrets by the design of course uh, I'm pretty sure they look very similar to the intermediate egrets that you find in um, Asia as well and possibly around yeah I'm pretty sure if I go ahead and take a look at the intermediate egret I'm pretty sure they're found in uh, is it the Americas? I can't remember though oh they're found in Australia and um, oh I think they're found in Africa, the Indian subcontinent, Southeast Asia, and Australia. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. So I'll probably say that these birds here are like the New World counterparts to the other white egrets from that genus, like you know the little egret and the intermediate egret, and also the great white egret. But I think the great white egret is more of a cosmopolitan species because I think you can find them here but yes I do I can't remember but I'm pretty sure I do remember that these that the great white egret was actually first proven to breed in the UK in 2012 I believe eight years ago very very nice and yes I know all the birds have got the same sort of colorization here I think the breeding plumage is a lot more colorful and a little, you know a little bit more different and a lot less yellow as I could tell. In fact, maybe the yellowness on these birds are pretty absent though. And uh, it looks quite nice. Take a look at the face. Very important here. Very nice looking head. 
uh, I'm not sure what the yellow parts are. Are they the laws? I'm pretty sure they're called the laws. In fact, all birds have got names on their booties. Remember, I used to say that on my YouTube channel back in the good old days. Well, sort of, because yes, when I first started my channel, I thought my channel was completely appalling. But mind you, I'm now starting to feel like I'm going to go into a much better direction along the way, though. So I'm just going to put these fishies away, and um, that's just about it, though. Snow Egret fishing clock, top back port, thirteen pounds fifty. Yes, as I actually realised, uh, after the coronavirus pandemic um, easing of the lockdown, uh, I've got a funny feeling that the prices of my pickup toys are starting to creep up. And uh, that could probably mean two sides, one good side and another bad side. And yet, a little bit dark just to indicate that these products were made during the coronavirus outbreak. Whoa, just nearly caught through the wires here. Next product. Speaking of herons and egrets, it's the tricolor coastal. Oh wait, tricolor heron coastal flock, twelve pack four, fourteen pounds ninety five. And the reason why they're expensive is because these birds here are a lot more colourful than the other herons that we looked at, which was the snowy egrets. And two, co uh, I'll probably say the two common things I could say about these herons is that one, they're herons and egrets, and second, they're both found in the New World or the Americas. And let's just take what we have. We've got three fish, two shrimps, and one crab. That's very nice. In fact, it's actually pretty rare to find crabs in the Fifth Art universe. Uh, let me just show you the birds, like so. And I think all of these birds are non-breeding plumage, and I think the packaging is telling me, like so. That's what they all say. Look at that. All in non-breeding plumage. That's what it says here. I think the breeding plumage birds. Uh, you often see in the Americas have got like a blue sort of beak and a blue sort of law. Kind of very interesting. And um, it's quite interesting that these birds look like purple herons to me. I think that's what they remind me. They obviously look like purple herons that you find in, you know, Asia, Europe, and Africa. Looks quite nice. It's got a brownish sort of hump though. And it's got a reddish sort of neck back. I think it's the nape. Reddish sort of nape, that's the back part of the neck of the bird. And, well, let's just say, the belly, of course, is brown. Yes, looks very, very nice. The beak is grey and yellow. Very interesting colour combinations, and my hands are sooty because I've just touched that freaking heron. I think, yes, I think it's the pencil lead from the grey pigmentation from the pencil there. There's the other heron here. Okay, and most importantly, they've got a name. If I show it to you closely, there they are. Who is there? There's the name here. I mean, um, in fact, all of the herons here have got names. It's very similar to the snowy egret product that I've just made, and it looks quite nice. In fact, these birds are more exclusive to the New World, as I would obviously expect that these birds may be vagrants to other parts of the world apart from the Americas. That's quite nice. In fact, it's very rare. I've never expected to create birds from Brazil or South America, which is interesting because normally I tend to concentrate on birds from Britain because, you know, I could just imagine myself just traveling all over the world to see new creatures and stuff, you know, when quarantine is over. But because of the lockdown, I obviously tend to focus on birds that I've seen that you can obviously see in the UK, which are native or introduced or birds which are seen in captivity from other you know, countries but living in the UK as a pet. And the trains I'm running here is Luke and the EF510 Cassiopeia electric locomotive pulling three passenger carriages that look like any in Clarabelle from the Thomas and Friends range. Okay, there's one of the shrimps here. It's got very interesting... Um, are these pincers or are these feelers? I'm pretty sure these are, uh, probably they're more, I think these are more like feelers because that's what shrimps look like, or prawns, or krill. Okay, are you sure I'm gonna, sh oh, I'm pretty sure the shrimp is right there, holy shrimp. And there's the other one here, looking a, a little bit more decidedly crooked, um, yes, it looks quite weird, I think, yes, this feeler part here, on the front part of the head looks a bit... Yeah, I wouldn't say it's crooked, but I think that's the way shrimps look like. 
Um, and the other thing that's missing is their flippers. You know, the things that, you know, the little arms that you often see in, you know, sea creatures and fish and etc. Okay, and we're going to take a look at these fishes there. Okay, I'm pretty sure, once again, it's, I'm pretty sure that these are very similar to these snowy egret fish. You know, the neon cardinal tetras. I think they're more like neon tetras. If I show you to you closely, I think these are more of a neon sort of tetra. Uh, yeah, I think there's like two or three different species of tetras. You've got the neon tetra, the cardinal tetra, and there's also the green version of the ne ne you know the neon tetra, which is a totally different sort of species, of course. It feels like that. You know what? I think this year, I think throughout the rest of quarantine, it feels like it's now becoming a very big shindy from many sort of animals, like, you know, all the birds and, you know, the figures that look like mammals and reptiles and stuff like that, and also amphibians, it's quite amazing. Okay, here's the crab. I don't know how many legs it's got. Hopefully it's got ten, because that's what crabs often have. Uh, I mean, the front part of the legs, uh, I'm pretty sure they're more like claws than legs. I'm pretty sure they're like eight legs and a pair of claws. So maybe looks more like a, um, a spider with, with claws in the front but yes as I would regardlessly say these claws at the front would probably be regarded as legs so that makes it like 10 correct me if I'm wrong but yes crabs are still crustaceans and I'm just repacking these little critters away back onto the box hopefully it's not the box of purgatory there you go let's take a look at another product here is another water bird here it's the Anhingo Fishy Lock 12 pack 12 pounds 95 and it's based on the Neotropics Anhinga bird of the Americas which is very interesting to say rarely I ever make products like this now, I've got a funny feeling I must have started going ahead of you know I'm pretty sure I must have gone ahead and just made some British birds now we're on to for some um, South American birds you know Brazilian birds birds that reside in the Amazon rainforest and yeah, it looks pretty similar. Oh my god, it looks like... Remember when I did these um, fishies that were supposed to look like Mario and Luigi? That was quite hilarious. I think it was that review that had the Great Crystal Greaves on it. Let's take a look. Oh! Oh my goodness me! And i got a funny feeling that these birds are very similar to the other darters that I've looked at. The Australian darter and also the African darter. I don't think I've covered the Oriental darter yet at the moment though. Maybe I have, or... I don't know, but let's just take a look at... Hopefully I've got six fishies, because I'm just counting there. Okay, so that's what the fishies look like. Very similar to these tetras, but it's got whiskers in the front. Very, very nice. Okay, looks like a Chinese dude, doesn't it, though? Well, stereotypically, though. Hopefully they don't have um, any signs of coronavirus. Maybe I can call these the corona catfish. Or corona fish because that would be too sinophobic for today's silly YouTube. Of course, I, I am from uh, a descendant of Chinese origin, but please do not heckle me. And please do not basically troll me, because, you know, just because I'm from that origin doesn't exactly mean you have to be basically mean to me. Okay? And I obviously don't want to basically be hurt, because you know, that's the way it is though. But anyways, these fishies have got, you know, like a yellowish, a yellowish sort of colorization at the back. The flippers are yellow and their head is grey. I think they're supposed to be like, um, a, a specific species of fish from South America or, I don't know, looks quite interesting though. Anyways, let's take a look at the darters of course. Oops, I didn't show you that fish correctly though, properly of course. Um, yes. Very similar to the other fishies I've seen before. Very, very similar. Now we're going to take a look at the darters. I think this one here is a female. They've got red eyes, brown neck, and also these birds are not gloss. As I've actually realised, these birds are not glossy in this product. So they're literally missing like um, the green glossiness, the dark green glossiness, but also they're missing like the dark blue and the, um, oops, sorry. Um, yeah, envelope just caught uh, a train from the wheel part, of course. Yep, the train just got stuck by an envelope. It just stepped in it. 
with its blue, of course, or its pair of blue, so, um, it's got a red eye, or she's got a red eye, a pair of red eyes, though, yellow beak, brown neck, and she's also got, like, a greyish, blackish, sort of colour, you know, um, colourisation there, that's what I was about to say, though, and I think it's missing, like, uh, blue glossiness on the tail though, and the wings, and also the body as well. Yes, the body is supposed to be like a glossiness of bluish black. Oh my goodness me. And I'm pretty sure the head part should be a little bit more like darkish green. I'm pretty sure that's what they often look like. In reality, they have a glossiness pattern on them though. Okay, we've got three females. And um, I think there's also another part of that here that I've actually got the same sort of thing that looks very similar to it though, but I think it's more related to two different species. Uh, this one here is the male data here, okay, and uh, he's got like a blue eye, okay, I think it's so sunny outside I don't think you have the best sort of view I believe from me, um, let me just take a look at the other side there, there's a bluish sort of eye, I'm not sure if you can see it closely though because it's, it's literally sunny inside or outside actually. So I think it's the brightness coming inside from the outside though. Mind you, it has been chronically wet though. We had a bit of a deluge. Well, not really that much of a flash flood from last night. Well, that night of course. Same colorization as the female, but I think the neck is a lot more darker and grayer and a less and a lot less brownier, of course. Very strange snake head sort of neck like bird of course and um, yes they obviously have names this is a male and Inga very interesting to see and we'll take a look at the female I'm not sure one of them has got like a um, a scarlet sort of pen sort of detailing here I might have placed a bit of an accent here I must have added like a um, an eye detailing I'm pretty sure it's like an eye detail sort of thing I'm pretty sure one mistake I've made is that I've actually added Filtic pen uh, detailing on one of the birds either. I think it was the female one that I did, and I should have never placed on it because if I just played it with the water, of course, well the eye, you know, detailing is going to be completely deteriorated. But anyways, these birds look so so beautiful, and mind you, even himself, this male data or anhinga, of course, looks very very nice, very beautiful, doesn't it? I think this is possibly one of the darker sort of species, I believe, I think this is the darkest species of all darters or snake birds or anhingas, I think that's what their name are, their names are, I think they're looking like, you know, I'm pretty sure these guys remind me of long necked cormorants or shags, very interesting names, although it does sound pretty profane, okay, I won't say the S-L-A-G word, because, you know, it also refers to a pile of coal, but it's also very nasty for a word like that. Mildly nasty, but not as nasty as the other words, though. Moderate, I'd probably say. Anyways, this is our last product here, and this is the, the, the sort of product I was talking about earlier on, just before I said the title. It's the Kelp Girl Robbery Gang vs. South American Turn Trio 12 pack. 12 pounds for that product here. And on this packaging, we can see like a non breeding South American tern, which looks like a common tern, but retains the summer plumage beak and feet and the non breeding plumage itself. Very interesting. I think that's probably one, like, one of the rarest species of terns I've never seen before. Comes with three starfish, three fish. And I love the front part of the kelp girl. It looks very interesting. I think they're all in breeding plumage. Okay, this would have been more like an August slash September sort of scenery because I think upside down to the rest of the world, um, August and September is basically spring and winter in South America, which is basically the southern hemisphere, you know, Argentina and Brazil. Let's take a look what we have. And oh my goodness me, I'm actually doing it pretty well, even though um, my Elsa is literally playing me up though, and I've actually got a pain in my mouth there, I think it's going to take like 10 to 14 days to heal, but let's take a look at what we have, so here's three different colours of the starfish that you often get in this product though, okay, so there's three starfish, so there's a purple one here, a red one here, and a brown one, and all of them have got like ochre sort of bottoms, 
Echo details on the bottom part of these creatures. They look very, very nice. Okay, looks very, very cool. Well, obviously they are. And we'll take a look at the fishies. I wonder what fishies are going to be like. Oh, I think these guys look like they've got a bird beak. But yes, they're basically South American sardines. And first time I actually did these was that I actually designed these guys from a Pokemon. I actually designed these guys after a Pokemon called Wishy Washy, uh, which is like a sardine like Pokemon. And it's supposed to be based like a Pacific South American sardine, I believe. Yeah, I did mention it's got a parrot, so a finch like beak. Okay, same with these other guys here as well. There's the other one here. Uh, that's the second one, and there's the third one. In fact, we've got three of each creature, three of the four species that we often get in this. Oh, sorry, I've just, I've just nearly collided a train, of course, which was the EF510 locomotive, and we'll take a look at the South American turns. And what's very interesting about these turns is, is that they've got pipe cleaner like tails. I actually made one of these guys like that before and I think there was like a common turn product which had tiles like that very very nice and look at this look at that it almost looks like a hybrid between a common turn in non breeding plumage and it's breeding plumage so it's basically a combination of both to look like this but this is what the South American common turn looks like very amazing indeed Really oversee these, I don't feel like I'll be obviously looking like I might be obviously catching up with these species and oh my god. Strange enough, this bird has got no name. Whereas, you know, this one here, it does have a name. And so is that one there. Okay, so I might probably uh, fix this bird by just writing a name. Just give me a moment, like so. You know, I'm pretty fast at writing, you know. Oh, there you go. It's done. So, all three birds are names. Yay! And yes, once again, the um, swallow tiles, of course, are posable. And then the back of the packaging here, the back of the product's packaging, of course, look what it says there. Turns have pipe cleaner, dual swallow like tiles, which are posable. So, yep, the packaging is right, indeed. Very, very nice. And I might show you the help girls and I'm pretty sure there'll be a whole bunch of people saying oh you've already shown the seagulls so much well if you remember back in 2018 late 2018 and 2019 as well as the early part of 2020 you actually don't realize but there's actually been a very huge number of seagull like products a lot of seagull themed products but I think throughout the rest of you know probably let's just say March you know the late part of March April May and June I've actually started to basically lose a bit of interest on seabirds because I'm actually starting to move on to something else today as I'm starting to leave my school year there, being year 14 now, it looks quite amazing. Okay, all of them are in breeding plumage, not to forget that they um, they all lack the, you know, the dark brown street patchings on their head, the dirty ones of course, the dirty brown street patterns on their head and neck during autumn and winter. But, there you go, that's just about it. That looks quite nice, and very strangely enough, all of them have got like a very angry sort of eye though. Very, very nice. Very, very cool, and yes, these guys, compared to turns, are more like parasitic creatures. And if you don't know what a parasitic oh, I don't know what I'm saying here. If you don't know what a parasitic creature is, it's basically an animal that takes one food away. That is basically an animal that is considered to be a robber. So it takes one food away, one piece of food from another organism, and that, what it is though, being kleptoparasitic, it means you're, you're basically being a robber, or a stealer. Anyways, that's just about it in this video. I think that was pretty simple, wasn't it, eh? And she thought it was going to be oh so complex, well, sort of, but... Mind you, we've only just taken a look at five different species of products. I'm not going to be very cruel to that monkey. I'm just going to basically, um, oops, place it to this side here so that the monkey can rest in all of its peaceful glory, so I have to say. And yes, I do really want to mention here, but sadly, um, when I did that one hour and five minute video here, uh, there's been some spamming on my YouTube channel though. There's been like 
three comments posted by Roman, and he said like, this is interesting, but he misspelled the name or the word interesting, and there was also another YouTuber saying, um, want to be friends, and his name was called Louette, and I actually just ignored it, and I actually just deleted some of the other comments, two of the same comments by Roman, and I actually deleted Louette's comments, because these comments overall were not so friendly to me there, because they're more like spammers, so... If you're on YouTube, please do remember to basically give this video a like, subscribe for more of that videos on YouTube, and as I said earlier, please be very careful on YouTube because there was a whole bunch of spammers that, you know, it can be an ultimate, you know, piece of confusion because no matter where you go online, there's a whole bunch of YouTubers, and sadly, there are some YouTubers who basically like to basically take advantage of you, and that's the big problem. Whoever thought that YouTube was supposed to be a really good place for making a whole bunch of videos and just sharing others to people online. Now there's basically a whole bunch of people just basically spamming with a whole bunch of, you know, of very, very unwanted pieces of comments. You know, that's just pretty sad. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, as I said earlier, give this video a like and subscribe. And also hit the bell icon for more new videos as well. So, that's just about it uh, guys. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and please obey the rules, and please stay alert, because we're still in virus times. If only I could literally just shout out to God say, God, please, save me from this virus. As always, thanks for watching, and bye for now.